There is a very common separation in development teams that's understandable, it may even seem obvious, but in practice I think it's problematic. That is the division between user interface and back end, and specifically the use of user interface design as a way to specify desirable features of a system. In my experience this is probably the most common approach to dividing up work, but it's also a very big mistake. So what is the problem with dividing up work like this and how could we do better? That's our topic for today. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. One of the commonest ways of dividing up work in bigger teams is to separate out user interface design and often treat it as part of the specification of new features rather than as part of the development, which is what it really is. A group of UI specialists create often detailed mock-ups of every new feature and then hands these UI designs over to the development team as a means of specifying the work to be done. I think that this is a fairly significant organisational structure mistake and one that results in poorer communications, a loss of context throughout the development process and fosters a more transactional style of working and limits innovation and creativity as a result, as well as producing ultimately lower quality solutions including worse user interfaces. I once worked as a member of a team that was handed UI's, UI designs from the UI team. These were presented as static pictures of user interfaces generated with some graphics program that I've now long forgotten the name of. The designs were often impossible to reproduce within the limits of the UI technology of the day, yet we were criticised anyway for not precisely reproducing the pictures in UI form. This was a while ago and the technology was more limited then, but I still think it points to a deeper truth that's still true today. A user interface sketch, however accurately produced, is not the same thing as a real user interface. There's a translation going on here. A real user interface is by definition a much more interactive system and real user in experience is a lot more about the mental model of, that the user holds of the system than it is about the pixels that we paint on the screen. This mental model is deeply informed by the whole system, not just by the pixels on the UI. UI experts have known this for a very long time and talk about the UI iceberg with the mental model of the system being the much larger part below sea level. One example of this kind of failure is the Amnesiac website that doesn't present a consistent view of state. I get very frustrated with sites like this that give us often complicated forms to complete and then erase all of the entries we've made if there's a single validation error. This is a very poor user experience and very poor user interface design, however visually stunning the pixel painting might be. Let me pause there and say thanks to our sponsors. We are very fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Tricentis and Transfic, all of whom are good friends of the channel. All these companies offer products and services that are also well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering in general, do click on the links in the description below to check them out. I think that you can often spot software that's been developed with the UI team separate from the development team. I recently opened a new bank account and the user interface uses an icon to represent the accounts that I hold. But depending on where I am when I click the icon, I get completely different views and responses and seemingly rarely the one that I'm hoping for. This is certainly bad user interface design even though they've clearly spent a lot of time and money to make it look very pretty. UI UX design is part of the design of the software. It's not part of the specification and it's about an awful lot more than only visual appeal. UI as a screen mock-up is also not even close to detailed enough to specify features. It works poorly as a specification of what we really want of the system because it misses so much in terms of the interactions, which is the thing that really helps users to build and maintain their mental model of the, how the system works. I think that this problem is caused by confusing user interface with user need. They are not even close to being the same thing. As a user of a bookstore, I want to be able to find books I like and buy them. This is a requirement. The decision to achieve that via 
a search field, a preview panel and a shopping cart is not a requirement, it's a design choice. It's part of the design of the solution. This may be a good or bad choice depending on the context, but it's still a design choice. It's a poor choice, for example, if we're trying to build a voice activated system. Uh, but to find books and buy them is still correct as a requirement. In software development, the job of requirements is to define what the system needs to do, not how it does it. How the system solves the problem is part of our job, the optional part, of us discovering suitable solutions. And the best solutions are achieved when we can iterate towards them as we learn more. So it's best if we can clearly state the goal that it is that we're trying to achieve rather than any particular solution on the way to that goal. Mistaking UI designs for requirements limits our ability to change things as we learn more and so reduces our chances of us finding good solutions. The most common place for UI design within an organization structure that I see looks something like this. A product owner works with the UI teams to mock up a UI of some kind. The UI is then passed over to the development team as, a, as the definition of a feature and the development team are tasked with making the UI work. This has several problems. First, as I've already described, this is how you end up with maybe pretty user interfaces but terrible usability. The other problem though is that you also build bottlenecks into the development process and so limit effective feedback that can help to fix the terrible usability problems. Using the user interface as a form of specification means that the development teams often lose sight of the real goal of the work, the context of what the feature is really trying to achieve. It's almost as though we're saying to the development team, don't worry about that, stu that stuff, you're not smart enough to understand, just make the UI work. There's a very big difference between implement this form and make it easy for the user to buy books. What we'd prefer to happen is that when the developer starts to make the UI work and finds that raises lots of unanswered questions, like which values would it be sensible to keep in the form if validation fails at this point, they can either ask the question of someone else or even better, understand what they're building well enough to imagine using the system for themselves and decide what, what would make it nice to use. If they have to raise a ticket to the user interface team or organize a meeting with the product owner and user interface team every time a question like this crops up, they simply won't. And so they will instead focus on the transactional behavior of merely making the UI work and do the absolute minimum to achieve a tick in the box so that they can call that feature complete rather than making something that's genuinely nice to use. So I think that treating UI teams as feature specifiers is a very poor choice indeed an anti-pattern. So what can we do that works better? I think it's important here to acknowledge that software developers are not usually also great UI designers. So it isn't that we don't need people with design skills, we clearly do. But software developers are usually also fairly sophisticated users of software in one form or another. So there is usually a lot of inbuilt tacit knowledge and experience that even the most graphically challenged member of the team brings with them in terms of what makes a good UI. So we can use some of that knowledge. So good design is more about how to organize ourselves to take advantage of these different skills more effectively. One way to view this, if you'll excuse the pun, is as a team topology problem. If you haven't already read the team topology book, I very strongly recommend it. I find UI teams work best as enabling teams in the team topology model. An enabling team helps stream align teams to overcome obstacles and also detect missing capabilities and helps the stream align teams to enhance their capabilities in those missing areas. Their, the goal of an enabling team isn't to specify or direct the work of stream aligned teams or even to do it for them but rather to help stream align teams to overcome the obstacles on the way to getting a great result. So instead of farming out the UI design work to a UI de design team, I think it works much better to leave the UI designs where I think they really belong alongside the main software development. I think that there are probably three main concerns though that we'd need to address to make this work. The first is the UI design skills of the stream aligned teams. Next is design consistency across teams. And last, how to achieve more effective specifications than merely drawing a picture of a user interface. Our goal then should be that regular stream aligned development teams own the responsibility for and can create good user interfaces for the features that they build. 
There are two solutions that we can use to address the skills problem. We can add people with those skills to the stream aligned teams or work to improve the skills of the developers in the stream aligned teams so that they do a better job of UI development. UI enabling teams can help with both of these. Maybe teaching stream aligned developers um, some of the basics of UI development and providing useful guidelines, maybe even tools that the stream aligned teams can use to, to guide them towards better user interfaces. The goal here is for the stream aligned teams to be able to do the normal 80% of user interface development tasks without the need for expert help. For the remaining 20%, the UI enabling team can lend their expertise when the stream aligned teams need it for those more unusual, more exploratory pieces of new work on new features that are breaking new ground in terms of user interface. In this mode, the job of the enabling team is twofold. To help the stream aligned teams make good design choices for this more challenging new feature and through the process coaching them on the job to help them to improve their, their UI development skills. The model for the enabling team as a home for expertise and the, the focus of their role being to support and grow the capabilities of stream aligned teams rather than doing the work on their behalf is an important one and is a generally useful approach for all sorts of areas of expertise that stream aligned teams may need occasional help with to grow their capabilities. Software development works most effectively when the teams that are directly responsible for adding customer value can do so without having to coordinate or mediate their work through other groups of people. The ability of development teams to make their own decisions and manage their own progress is an important predictor of the, their ability to build better software faster. Many organizations see user interface design consistency as a strong motivator for centralizing the UI design into a single team. But as we've seen, that comes at a cost. It works against autonomy in building, building bottlenecks into the development process and reduces the ability of the team to iterate towards better designs. Fortunately, there are other routes to achieving design consistency. The UI enabling team can usefully define user interface guidelines and patterns and maybe even reusable assets, style sheets, code for UI components and so on. Stream aligned teams can use these assets to ensure that their design choices follow the conventions that are common across many teams. How detailed or not these guidelines are is an organizational choice. I often compare Apple's very specific, very precise user interface guidelines with Microsoft's more relaxed approach uh, as an example of this. In the Apple world, the, the specification, the guidelines are very, very precise. And as a result, there's a very high level of consistency between applications in the Apple ecosystem, even for applications developed by completely independent companies and teams when compared to the freedom and so less consistency of the Windows world at least. Windows gives a, a lot more freedom in terms of the user interface guidelines and so you see more innovative uses of, of their platform in some ways. Neither approach here is right for all cases. You choose which makes most sense for your system. As for creating more effective specifications for features than simply UI mockups, the solution for this is to adopt a strong focus on the behavioral needs of the system rather than focusing on the UI only. Behavior driven development is an immensely powerful technique to improve this behavioral focus. This video may help you to under better understand how BDD fits in here. I also have two free how to guides one on acceptance test driven development and one on how to write better stories. So all of those things are linked in the description below, so do check them out. Good user interfaces are not made by focusing on how pretty everything looks. Fundamentally, an effective user interface is about how well it expresses the model of what's going on in the software that we're presenting. Good user interfaces allow us as users to guess where to go next and what's likely to happen when you click on the account icon. Good user interfaces can't be divorced from the assumptions that we all make when we build the code. As software developers, even developers of back-end systems, we are still part of supporting, sustaining and evolving the usability of our systems overall. 
it's all part of supporting that mental model that the user holds of the systems that we build. I think it's a big mistake to attempt to offload the responsibility for our user interfaces only to user interface experts. In the best software, the concept of user interface goes an awful lot deeper than that. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you too to our patrons who support our work here on the Continuous Delivery channel. If you'd like to be added to our list of patrons and join in their support and their access to a whole raft of other uh, content, please do check out the link to our Patreon community. Thank you again. Bye-bye.